My name is Scott Bowman. I am the creative behind Idea Brickworks, a company I started to do big Lego events and kits, that kind of stuff. And this is kind of my signature build. Uh, it's a scale model of the Saturn V moon rocket. Uh, this one is pretty much towards what Apollo 11 would have been. Uh, the rockets did actually change some as each mission went. So take us through the logistics then of like creating something of this size out of Lego. It's also pretty thin all the way that tall, so you got to have a lot of support in there. Absolutely. So th this was a brainchild that I had about uh, five years ago, and I wanted a, an event that could be STEM-related and would help kids to understand the process of building and, and a project kind of thing. So I started thinking, and of course I'm a child of the 60s, so I watched... You know, Walter Cronkite was my guide, and I watched them land. And so I just started thinking about this would make it easy for me to have kids build part of it and then build something much bigger. Uh, easy is what I thought when I did it, but it wasn't. Um, so I spent about 350 hours uh, designing it. Then I had to put together instructions. So there's like 1,700, 1,800 pages of instructions. Um, that I'm probably going to sell. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to sell it for, but uh, procurement of the 34,000 bricks on you, though. You've got to, <laughs> got to find the brick yourself. But um, So uh, kids would come in, work for about a half an hour in groups of six, and I'd have an engineering student or an AFAL that would mentor them, and they would then build the segments, and I would build it up. So this is what the segment looks like. So this is an example of two lifts. So lifts were in brick uh, five, roughly tall, and that's what a group would make until it was done. Then it would feed back into me. I'd use the red brick, because the Saturn V is not symmetrical. So I had to be able to orient each segment as it came so that I could then put it together. And then I've linked the, um, the Technic so that it's very, very tough. You cannot pull this apart. So it makes it transport in about seven different segments so I can take it down and uh, move it. So that's kind of how it's made on the inside. I'm also half Danish, so every segment has a small Danish flag in it. <laughs> Honor, you know. Yeah. So I, I, one time I did a build Danes in space. It w didn't go very far, but, you know, it was an idea. But everything's brick built. So, you know, the, the small letters, as much as I could do in a three stud wide the flag is all plates. Um, they are all located where they should be. The seams are all where they should be. Um, the scale is each brick is a foot, so a plate then would be four inches. Um, and so I do have some astronauts that show you the scale. Uh, and, you know, it, it's been kind of my signature. There are two of these now. So there's one in Boise, and then there's one in Seattle. Yeah, and it's such an impressive, imposing build, and I love how you captured all the details. Like you said, the lettering and symbols and everything are on there just the right spots. Right, right. And, and that was really important to me, and all the appendages you see have a purpose. Um, one of the things that, again, I'm, I've got a little age on me, um, but you're never done learning. So I thought I knew everything about Apollo when I was a kid because I just followed it and I, you know, I had to mail off to NASA, right? And I got this manila envelope with all this wonderful stuff, you know? And so now as a 60 year old recovering mechanical engineer, I come back to design this and I'm learning how brilliant our predecessors were. I mean, this is just an momentous accomplishment. And, you know, for me, it was fun. Um, you know, the lifts are, there are 69 different lifts only three of them are the same. So I had to do instructions for all of them because there just was very few duplicates. So everything is unique as it goes up. So um, it was kind of a, it taxed all the engineering I've got on project management, through procurement, through funding, all those things became really, really um, issues because this doesn't build itself, right? So um, having a thousand kids help build it uh, chaotic, crazy, loud, and wonderful. Just, just incredible fun. 
So you mentioned there are a couple of these in existence. Where are those usually on display, or if people want to see them, are there places that they will be on display in the future? There are. Um, the one in Boise uh, goes around to a lot of STEM events that I, I do. I do a lot of STEM events uh, across that. They call it the Treasure Valley, you know, around Boise. Um, it has been for about nine months at Bricks Exhibit at the Discovery Center of Idaho. Uh, I did promise it to a good friend of mine who runs a, she's a member of the Lug, she runs a pop culture store. So it's going to live there for a few months uh, and then I'll decide. I'd really like to get it at the airport. I think it'd be fun. Um, so if you know somebody from the Boise Airport, <laughs> please call Scott Bowman. Use your connections. <laughs> right, right, right. Use your connections. The, the internet, help me. Um, now, the one in Seattle, uh, it was built at the Museum of Flight, and it was going to be on display there, but uh, for some reason, their administration said that their education department and their um, exhibit department kind of got in a fight, and so it's really in limbo whether it's going to be seen as much. So it's spending a lot of time, but we've got uh, members of Sea Lug that are going to take it to a lot of events as well. I think this one's now going to head to Vancouver to the next um, show. Okay. So, uh, you know, someday I'd like, like to get this out to Brick Fair. I'd like to get this out to Brick World, which used to be my home one because I'm from Iowa, so that's where I used to go. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd like to get it around. Um, and then hopefully people see it on your website. That's so right. If nothing else, you can see it on YouTube. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's a really fun build. Um, a lot of people have asked me why I don't build a LUT, the launch umbilical tower, and that's because it would be like 200,000 brick instead of, you know, 34,000. So, um, but I am kind of noodling my next project, but it's going to take an armature to beat all armatures because I think I want to do the International Space Station in the same scale. So we're talking 40 feet long, and the solar cells, you know, you can get away with so much when you don't have any gravity. But here, I got gravity, so, you know, four-foot-long solar cells, I'm going to have to have something to support them, so. Well, we'll look forward to that someday being yeah. finished. But thank you so much for taking us through the massive build here, and I'm glad it could come out to the show. Sure. Hey, before we go, I have something for you guys. So, as part of this, this is the total plug for Idea Brickworks, but... I sell micro versions of the Saturn V, and I would like you guys to have one um, predicated on the fact that you will do the build and then give me a review, For good sure. or bad. I'm sure you'll be happy with it. But Thank you so you much. Bet. This is fantastic. Yeah, I love so it. This is what it looks like. <laughs> wow. Oh, the little base there? Yeah. Well, you don't get the little base. Okay. That's an add-on. So, <laughs> And our, our good friend of the community, Kevin Hinkle, did the artwork for me on this one. Perfect. So. And he no, did it's a the, great looking model, so I'm excited now to build it. Yeah, and then this is uh, Kevin did my avatar too, so <laughs> I am forever tied to the Saturn V, you know. There you go, yes. But no, we look forward to more projects from you. I'll definitely build this and send you any feedback I have. I think it'll be fantastic, so thank you. Cool, good. Thank you.